How are we all? We good? So, what I'd like to do is I'd like everybody to take out no sugar and turn to Act 1, Scene 1. Okay? Um, you can see I've scanned mine in, so you can actually see it here up on the screen. Um, I'd like you to have a look at the sorts of notes that I've taken, where I've highlighted, okay, to give you an idea um, for maybe how to begin to take notes yourself. Now, there are a few different ways that you can take notes now. Ultimately, the purpose in this note taking is for us to get ideas about what I can put in an essay, okay? Um, so you can start to get those ideas from the, um, the essay that we read last lesson, okay? You saw the examples that we used in that essay, okay? And we now have to start to think, when we read this book again for the second time, we're reading it not to understand the story and the plot, but we're reading it with this critical eye. And that eye is looking for what, what favours this, what is the suggestion implicates society, okay? what, you know, how to analyse it and use it in an essay. Is it good evidence to use? What does it suggest? What does it mean? Okay, so actually a really good place to start. So in here we can include in an excellent lesson. I'm actually going to give you a essay that most of it's um, evidence from Act 1, Scene 1. Okay, um, it's, not, it, 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 it's not a perfect essay but I'm just going to show you what you can do with it, right? Um, but, so let's start. And you can see I've highlighted at first that Sam, it's 1929, Sam Millimora is preparing mugs of tea and he's lacing them generously with sugar. Okay? So the idea that this is, he's been putting a lot of sugar, he's laced them generously. This means he's putting a lot of sugar in the tea. Why would he be saying that? Why would Jack Davis put this in the opening scene and stage direction? Do you all know what a stage direction is? A stage direction, I'm going to whip over and I'll be going from one to the other here. Yes. You have! Okay. Okay. Along the left, open in one note. That will and that will work. And and then it gives you the login. Sign into your school account. Yep. So, um, what you might do as I go through this, are you happy for me to continue and you can take notes in one note, you can take notes on your piece of paper, you can take notes on your book. I don't really mind how you can take notes. I've got a bunch of notes that you'll be able to access. You can record what I say, as in you can type what I say, or you can just read and learn that way, as long as you make sure you read this afterwards. Okay. So a stage direction is an instruction from the playwright that tells how the actors should act or what they should do. The scene directions or stage directions are in italics. So if we come back over here, you can see that this whole section is in italics. Okay, That's not what an actor reads, but it's telling the actors how to read and what to do, not what to say. The rest of it here is what to say. This is what to do or how to do it, okay? These are called stage directions. So, we got stage direction here. Sam Millimora is preparing mugs of tea, lacing them generously with sugar, okay? And I've said this is a contrast with later in the play when there is no sugar, okay? So right in the beginning, he's putting this sugar in the tea and that shows a physical contrast 
between later in the play where there's no sugar left, okay? So Sam is preparing mugs of tea and he's adding sugar. Jack Davis is creating a contrast with later in the play when there's no sugar. And also here, David and Cece play cricket with a homemade bat and ball. Now we made notes last time, or we spoke last time about the fact that they were playing cricket. And that just, just by having, Jack Davis has them playing a European game, which is hinting, suggesting, or implying this loss of their own culture because of adapting, adopting, to, sorry, adapting to or adopting the new culture, the European culture. Cricket is a European game. They're playing cricket. Now the other thing that's here that you might not notice, they're playing cricket with a homemade bat and ball. Homemade. So if you go to a shop to buy the cricket bat, okay, it's a homemade cricket bat and ball. What does that mean? What does that suggest? They're poor. They're poor. Absolutely. Right in the opening scene directions, Jack Davis is implying their poverty level. Okay? They can't go out and buy their own bat and ball, but they are having a homemade bat and ball. So they don't have a lot of money. They have a basic, simple life. Okay. Now, if you have a notes here. Davis, Davis uses this to suggest the loss of the Aboriginal culture and the replacing of the European games with the Aboriginal games. Okay, And also they play with a handmade bat and ball, which indicates the simple life of the Miller family. And basic items need to be made themselves. It shows their poverty. And I use the word rudimentary. Rudimentary is a word that means simple, The opening scene shows the family is poor, but they are surviving as best they can. Okay. So it, it, they are poor, but they're not feeling sorry for themselves. They're not wallowing in pity. They're not saying, oh, I'm so poor, my life is awful. Okay. They have a strong spirit. They are resilient. Okay. Let me write that. They have a strong spirit. Spirit. They are resilient. Okay. Is that word resilient a new word? Resilient has the feeling of able to cope or deal if things are bad. Okay. So if things don't go well, you can still be okay. You can bounce back. Can I keep going? Are we all good? Okay, I'm going to keep going. Joe is reading the special centenary edition of the Western Mail. He's reading a newspaper that's called the Western Mail. Now, Joe, this is a stage direction here reads aloud falteringly. This is a word in the stage directions that uses how he's reading. So the feeling of this word, yes. Feeling this word, this 
For example, Joe is probably reading like this. The flood was stirred as if by a trumpet, by the historical... Can you imagine when a child is learning to read? They don't read fluently or confidently, but they read with pauses, thinking time, because they're still learning to read. That is the feeling that is in this word falteringly. Okay? So, um, we can take notes on that. Okay? Joe reads falteringly with lots of pauses, not confidently. Can someone tell me why they think that might be? What does it show if Joe reads falteringly? You? A new language, so he's not speaking his first language, maybe. Okay. What about levels of education? Okay, so it's indicating a low level of education. Now, something I want you to be aware of here, this is going to be connected to later in the book. Do you remember in Moor River Settlement, there's a nun that works there, Sister Eileen. She wants to open a library. Okay. Do you remember what Mr. Neil says? Exactly. Mr. Neil says, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Okay. So Mr. Neil's response, and I've actually got this here, including them. All right. Sister Eileen tries to open a library for the Aboriginal children. Mr. Neil refuses, saying a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Now, at the beginning of the play, we have this word falteringly describing how Joe speaks. And this highlights his lack of formal education. Formal education is in school, classwork, like this, in a classroom. Okay, And this reminds the audience about the lack of equality between whites and Aboriginal people in terms of education. Okay. Now, later on in this play, Jack Davis goes one step further in his commentary about access to education. And he's suggesting that it's not only an imbalance, but it's deliberate. Okay, it's intentional. Okay. Later in the play, Sister Eileen tries to open a library. Mr. Neil refuses, saying a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. This suggests deliberate, intentional policy by the government to limit education for Aboriginal people. Why? Easy to control them if they don't have an education. They won't rise up. Okay? Without knowledge, knowledge and education leads to power. Okay, so Davis is actually suggesting that it's deliberate, okay, that it's not, that it's a government policy, a result of a government policy here, okay. Let's say deliberate intentional policy to limit that education. Does that make sense? Yeah? I know, you read the book, novel, you read the play on your own and you just think it's a play and then you start to talk about it and you realise, gosh, there's so much in just one page that we can analyse, we can talk about. So if you have a look at some of the notes I've made, I've written rudimentary, simple, homemade, cricket indicating loss of culture. Um, and I've even got here, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. I've written the quote from later on and connecting it, connected it myself. Okay. Now, you don't have to copy my notes. You don't have to have the same notes that I have. But these are ideas for, as you read again, the sorts of things that you can connect to. Okay? Uh, can we turn over the page? So I'm not going to ask you to read all of that, and I'm going to tell you where to focus. So I've highlighted a few things that I thought were really important here at the top of the next page. So Joe is reading falteringly. Okay? And he is describing a scene where there's a parade. Okay. We can guess as the audience that this parade might be an Australia Day parade. 
Okay, it's a centenary, so it's a hundred year celebration. Do you all know when Australia Day is? 26th of January. Do you, anyone know what it's the anniversary of? The 26th of January was the date that the first white people arrived in Australia. Okay. Captain Cook in 1788 arrived into Sydney on January the 26th, 1788. Think about what it might mean for an Aboriginal person. You, okay, so Australia Day is like, well, okay, it's like oh, I didn't exist before. Okay, but also, do they think it's the day where their country started? No. In fact, what do you think they might think? And. It's the end. It's the day when our country got stolen, got taken away. Our civilization was lost on that day. So then. No, John Cena were brass previous page. Was a um, a parade. With them was a reminder of the dangers they faced in the shape of three lorries carrying Aborigines. So Aborigines who were dancing to a brass band. And Sam says, and I have put this down because I like these quotes here. Sam says Gura Wurong which is an expression of disbelief in the Aboriginal language. You don't have to learn that. But he's like, what? Okay. Nyungas corroborean to a Wedala's brass band. Okay. Nyungas, Aboriginal people dancing to a white person's brass band. <coughs> and Jimmy. Jimmy Character starts to be established here. Jimmy says, that beats everything. Stupid bloody black fellas. All right. Jimmy is really honest. He is outspoken. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back down here. Joe says, Nyungas corroboree into a Wajala's brass band. There's a lot of new words in there, but I like it as a quote. Jimmy exclaims stupid bloody black fellas and then he says something along the lines of them bastards you know what a bastard is it's a bad word you probably shouldn't use it to a teacher or to each other <laughs> all right uh, it actually means a person whose parents weren't married when they were born it's nowadays it doesn't really like lots of people are in that situation that maybe they're not married or they have children and they're not married. But back in those days, I think 50, 100 years ago, it was a really bad thing to be a bastard because you were not legitimate, you weren't like a real son or daughter if your parents weren't married. Okay? So them bastards, the Wajala, took our country and them black fellas are dancing for them. Okay? So he's saying, they're stupid, why are they dancing? They took our country and now they're celebrating by dancing. Okay? So Jimmy, his character's established here. He's outspoken. He's intelligent because he's analysed this situation and realises that these other black fellas are doing the wrong thing. Okay? Now, black fellas is another word that we shouldn't use. It's um, a word, casual word, used to refer to Aboriginal people. Okay? Um, so don't use it in your essays. Use Aboriginal people, Indigenous people. Okay, and if you're using it as a quote, great. Okay, it's good in this quote. Um, okay, I will come back here. Okay. All right. So you know why them Wajalas marching down the street? Eh? I'll tell you why. Because them bastards took our country, and them black fellas are dancing for them. Bastards. Okay. Now, if we come down to the bottom of this page, I've also highlighted some things here. Okay. Um, Millie is sending her two youngest kids to school, Cece and David. You two, get to school. Here's twopence, or tuppence. That's a 
couple of cents, okay? Buy an apple each for lunch, okay? And she gives it to them. David says, oh, can I have enough for pie? Millie says, it's all the money I got. I've highlighted that because I thought it was important. Why might it be important? It's all the money I've got. It's me, they're poor. <laughs> well, yes, it means they're poor. They only have the last money. What else does it show about Millie's character as a mum? She loves her kids. She's given her children her last money. Not very much, but she's given it to them so they can have a healthy lunch of an apple. Okay, all right. So it's showing a lot of caring relationships within this family. Although they are poor, they're caring for each other. Okay, giving away their last money. So then there's a real imbalance here in this section. Oh, Mum, old Tony, the ding always sells us the little shriveled ones, and then Wajella kids get the big fat ones. You know what a shriveled apple is? Here, let me do a little Google search for you. That is like a shriveled apple. Okay? Shriveled, shrunken, old. And he says, okay, he sells us. So the guy in the shop at school sells us the little shriveled ones and gives the Wedella kids the big fat ones. Okay? So this simple, simple sentence here highlights this contrast and unfairness, inequality between the treatment of the white kids with the Aboriginal children. Okay. So Cece highlights the unfairness of the treatment. The old Tony giving the younger children the little shriveled apples and the Wajala kids the big fat ones. Keep going on there. Joe gives them sixpence. So Joe gives them some money, their older brother, so that they can buy that pie. Again, highlighting this really caring relationship that the older brother is giving them some money to help them. Oh, thanks, Brudge. Okay. Then they go and they do some washing. And Millie says to her husband, Sam, and to her eldest son, Joe, and you fellas, we got no meat for dinner or supper. You'll have to go out and get a couple of rabbits. Okay. So Sam and Joe go out hunting to get rabbits for dinner. All right. What is this suggesting, implying? What might you know? What could we say about it? Self-sufficiency. Okay. Have I got that word in there? I might even have it up there. Here. Resilience and self-sufficiency. What this means is that they're not relying, needing the government's rations. They can go out and get their own food. The rabbits. Okay. So although they are poor, they have no meat. They have a way of coping. They are strong spirited. They'll go out and get rabbits themselves. Okay? So Sam and Joe are hunting. Two things. I say one thing, it shows their spirit, it shows their self sufficiency. Self sufficiency is they can look after themselves. Okay? It also shows those traditional ways of hunting. Okay? It's a traditional Aboriginal way that they go out and hunt for their food. So they don't have enough meat. Joe and Sam go hunting for rabbits. Indicates the family are self-sufficient. They can look after themselves. They don't rely on the government. They can hunt. And my summary there says, although the family are poor, they have a simple, rudimentary life, but they're also resilient. Okay. So this opening scene shows us a lot of things. Now, what we can do, the reason we make notes like this, we don't make notes about everything, but we make notes about a few things. If we get a topic about family relationships, okay, we have a few things that we can say there. We can show they, we can remember that point that Millie gives her last two pence to her children so they can buy an apple, which demonstrates the caring relationships in the Millimura family. Okay, we might 
use also that Joe um, gives sixpence so that his younger younger brother and sister can have pie instead of an apple. These small things, but they demonstrate caring relationships. Okay, remember that we have to find evidence, and we have to know which evidence to use, and we have to be able to analyse this evidence. Okay, so you can't say just that they really care about each other and say nothing else. You've got to say why we know they care about each other. Well, we have this evidence from the test. Now, you might also say, for example, okay, there might be a question on unfairness, okay, that no sugar as a play highlights the unfairness between Aboriginal and white communities. You can use this line about the um, little shriveled apples versus the Wajala kids get the big fat ones. Okay? You don't have to remember the whole thing. You remember little shriveled apple, no, little shriveled ones and big fat ones, okay? And you use those two, okay? You might get one about government policy. The government authority is into inequality. And we can use this one about the um, stealing the land, then bastards took our country and the black fellas are dancing for it. This one is hinting more at a country's inequality, okay? But these are the sorts of things, as we read each chapter, again, we're going to really make notes on what is this same connecting to. Now, what I would start to create the quotes that you are going to learn. So read this again, have a look at what I've written, okay, and start to decide which of these quotes, pick five, from this opening sentence. Small ones. Don't try and learn big long sentences for me. I want you to learn sentences. Three or four need in each quote. But you need a because the thing is, no, when it's going to be a bad quote, quotes, quotes for resilience, quotes for self sufficiency, quotes for inequality, quotes, quotes for government policy, quotes for education. You need quotes for all of these things. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Three to four words is all you need. So, two things. Your list of quotes. Read over them if you want again to be recorded. But the other thing about this one, so you can actually then have seen one yourself and get some ideas from here. Okay? That's what I'd be doing, but I do understand that you can all, you know, some of you might do. You know, one second and then do this and make it the Do what you can do to get your head around these quotes and how to use them. Okay? Cool. I'm going to stop my lecture now.